Hi everyone, this is Paul Akers. I'm doing a quick talk for you called, Who Are the 2%? So as I travel around the world, I've observed that there's only a certain group of leaders that get lean at the level high enough to create true transformation in an organization. So I kept asking myself, who are these 2%? So I went ahead and put together a quick five minute keynote, maybe even four minutes, on the characteristics that I've observed from people around the globe who have always and successfully been able to create this transformation. So here are the characteristics. Number one, they are incredibly humble people. They're always willing to say, wow, I didn't know that. And they're really willing to give other people credit and they do it very readily and very easily. The next thing is they love people. They have this natural affinity that people are amazing. That's kind of the way they think about people. And so that is always the overlying principle. People are amazing, others first. And if you're wondering, I have that picture of Tai Chi Ono because Tai Chi Ono is kind of like one of my heroes. So he's kind of overlooking my talk and maybe he's confirming that what I'm saying is right or wrong. The next thing is they get excited about the simplest improvement. I learned this because somebody actually observed it from me. They said, Paul, you get excited about the simplest things. And then I noticed that other people who were very successful also did the same thing, creating this transformation. So somebody labels a spoon, fork, and knife, and I go, wow, that's incredible. Not, oh, well, whatever. And this individual over here created a pokeyoke, a mistake proof on how to make sure they always got the right material. And they didn't make a mistake, very simple, but a very effective thing. So they love and get excited about the simplest improvement. The next thing is they're always giving credit to everyone and they're always acknowledging that. So this is a picture of me in China high-fiving 350 employees as they leave because I wanted to thank them for all the great improvements they are making. So they're going out of their way to build people up and they get excited about the small things. They don't dismiss those at all. The next thing is they still get even more excited about the simplest things. So in the same plant in China, as we were teaching them two second lean, some of the workers, particularly the sewing, the lady who were doing the sewing, they noticed their, their stools were a little low. So without even asking, they got up immediately and went and added little feet to the bottom of their chairs. I go, oh my gosh, look at them. They totally get it. And now the plant manager comes there and I'm saying, you've got to recognize them now. So what do they do? They teach their leadership that it's very important to acknowledge workers when they do the smallest thing. So here's the plant manager and Hugh and I are showing him. It's so important to acknowledge the workers for the smallest thing. And this is not traditionally done in China, but this is what you must do. Okay, the next thing is chaos drives them crazy. I walked into the shop one time and I'm just going, oh my gosh. I noticed that lean thinkers that create transformation, they look at chaos and they say, there's no reason for it. And they just will not allow it. Chaos drives them crazy. The next thing is they love to learn. Any chance they have to learn something new, they're going, oh wow, again, this is that humility. I didn't know that, teach me more. They're naturally wanting to learn at every turn. The next thing is lean is the very essence of their success. Lean is not something they do with their company. It is the essence of what they do with their company. They recognize that continuous improvement and unleashing the creativity in their people is the very element that will make them successful today and 40 years from now. It is the essence of the organization. The next thing is they live a life of urgency. Everything that happens needs to be done now. They don't put things off. They don't make big checklists on things to do in the future. They fix what bugs them and they do it now. But this is a really cool point. They don't live a life of, of emergency, but of urgency. And there's a big difference between the two because people who live in a life of emergency, they're the supermen. They're the ones who always have to come in and solve the problems. Lean thinkers and lean leaders never think that way. They wanna stop and fix it now. So there are no emergencies. They don't wanna be the superstar. They don't wanna be the hero. They just want processes to be the hero. The next thing is they're willing to do the hard work. Nick Cosell at Walters and Wolf keyed me into this one. Lean is simple, but it's hard work. And as Michael Altoff says from Yellow Tools, lean is hard work that makes work easy. Make no doubt about it. Lean is hard, hard work. And they're willing to put in the hard work. There's so many flash in the pan leaders that look at lean and they go, yeah, 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 I want it, I want it. And then they realize, wow, I gotta do this every day. 
oh no, I, I'm not cut out for that. They're not willing to do the hard work. Great leaders understand the work in front of them and they're willing to roll their sleeves up and get it done. Thank you, Nick. They don't just speak up, they listen up. This is so important. They're not always just talking about lean. They're listening so carefully to what other people are saying. They're gathering the knowledge, as Deming says, profound knowledge. They want to know deeply what's going on in the systems and processes that they've set up so they can help their people do their work better. Listen up. Don't just speak up. The next thing is they are relentless about challenging themselves and people. Look at the sign in the back. We make zero defects, not Six Sigma, zero. They're constantly putting huge expectations on their people and getting their people to reach up to these high, high levels and they do the same thing for themselves. They are never satisfied. They are relentless about challenging their people. These characteristics are tried and true through every great organization and every great leader that's created transformation in organizations around the world. These are 100% characteristics that I've seen consistently every time. And in the absence of any one of these, transformation will not happen. The next thing is they see lean as discovering or like finding a hidden treasure. When they find lean, they go, oh my gosh, finally I found the holy grail. Finally I found what's going to solve my problems. This is exactly what I thought. And every lean leader that finds out about lean, this is the way they view lean. They go, wow, finally I've been searching and I found it. Next, they see a rainbow when there's no rainbow in view. They see the possibility and yet there's nothing in front of them that looks like there would be remotely a chance of any possibility. They see a rainbow when there's no rainbow in view. They have incredible vision on what their organization will look like if they pull this off and then they are determined to not let anything stop them from reaching that rainbow. So these are the 2%. These are the characteristics that I've identified consistently, I find, in great lean leaders around the world that create transformation, greatness, remarkableness in their organization. Hopefully that helps. Thanks a lot.